After creating a new reporting period, either from scratch with common defaults or from a rollover, you'll see this screen. This is the reporting period I just created in the video on how to create a new reporting period. If you're still a bit unsure about how to create a new reporting period and how we landed on this screen, then you might like to take a moment to review that video. Notice that the reporting tab is open by default. It's essentially a quick preview of the reporting period just created. At the top of the screen, you'll see any warnings that are applicable. These might be related to attendance or any students that have not been added to the reporting period. A green tick will indicate that the data are OK. A red cross will indicate that more information is required. Notice also that each setup area presented is effectively mirrored in the menu to the left. Clicking on the setup area link or the menu link will take you to the same page. When setting up a reporting period, you work through each of these menu items sequentially. This workflow contributes all the necessary information to successfully create an assessment schema. It's worth taking a moment here to remember that an assessment schema is a critical part of setting up a reporting period. Every student needs to be assigned to an assessment schema for a reporting period to work correctly.